United gets back. Try not to give up too many yards. Back in 1991, these teams met in the playoffs, not the championship round, and Wayne Hills was a 16-14 winner. But the last time they met was right here at Giants Stadium last year. Hoboken won it 14-7 to win their state title. Those folks get to, it looks like right now, go back to Hoboken with another title tonight. Hoboken, New Jersey. Of course, the almost some notable people. I guess you might be thinking in terms of otherwise. I was thinking more along the lines of Rosalie Monteverdi. That would be the mom of our director, John Anderson. Oh, hey. Hey. Say that name again. Rosalie Monteverdi. All the way from? Now Anderson. That was, of course, her maiden name. On second down. Moment in motion. From 10 yards away, Wayne Hill's on the board trying to keep this one alive with five minutes left. Trying to keep it alive in spite of this on the draw play. He, he showed some speed that time, not showing any effects of that ankle injury that he's had and he's been suffering from. Came into the game looking like he was going to have a great game, a, a great opportunity to get a lot of, a lot of carries. But on that time, he went in virtually untouched for a touchdown. His 19th score of the year. And if there was any hope for Wayne Hills of keeping this one alive, it is still there now with 502 left. You're probably thinking onside kick. First, you got to take care of the extra point. And it is good. Flag down on the play came late. They might have run into the kicker, Hagauer. And if that's the case, they tack that onto the kickoff, and that might make the onside kick a little bit easier. They did run into the kicker. Going back, taking another look at the quarterback and the touchdown play to Spicer. Just a little draw, off tackle. No one touches him. Spicer makes his move to the outside. Goes in for the touchdown. Now, Wayne Hills is really excited because this play really gives them opportunity from another angle to see that they have something in their arsenal that will work, and that's the draw play. They've been trying to come drop back and throw the ball. They've been sacked, had to throw the ball away a lot. 69-yard drive, a 10-yard touchdown run for Spicer. And that call came right off of the timeout for Chris Olsen as he came out and talked to his team. Uh, first call on that play and a big one, and now to go for the... 40-yard line, this is going to be the opportunity right now. Now they're going to move that up. It's going to be the opportunity right now for the onside kick, but it's not going to be from the 40. you got to be thinking about the penalty that's going to get tacked on for the running into the kicker call. And this makes it a real pleasant try for an onside kick when you're starting in the other team's territory. Wow. You get on top of this one, you're going to be inside their 35-yard line with five minutes left to go in the game. Start from the Hoboken 45. One thing you got to be careful of, though, Jared, the kind of athletes on this Hoboken team, they may not just be content to fall on it, they may try to take it back the other way. And we have seen that happen before. On a coverage team, you must make sure that you can get either to the ball or to the person who has the ball. There they go in motion. Hagauer's got it set up. The onside kick. The big bounce off a couple of hands was covered and covered nicely by Ventura with a leap at the 35-yard line. Ventura, that hand, the hand person coming up with the coverage on the, on the onside attempt. Tell you what, when you make a leap one yard shy of that 10-yard mark, you better come down with you the ball. You better come up with the ball because he is so confident that he can get this ball. He jumps in front of that 10-yard line mark. Keeps his hands on the ball and covers it up. Now here's where the rushing attack is. Hoboken can take over, leading 21-7. Only five minutes left. Wayne Hills fired up right now from their first touchdown. And motion on the left side of the line from Chris Aponte. Looks like that's going to be five yards against Hoboken. We were talking about Hoboken in that 
players coming out with pads. On the offense. number 50, Gonzalez, and he is the best lineman that they have, or that's what the coaches say. They, they really think that he's the best lineman that they have on the squad. And you see, he comes out not only padded up, but he has a cast on his left hand that he uses not only for blocking, but for punishing. <laughs> Eleven penalties on the night against Toboken, and they've been penalized for more than 100 yards. First down at 15 now. George. Oh, he got back close to the penalty up to the 35-yard line, or close to it. Second down now coming up, and the clock running. running and as if you're Wayne Hills what you really want to do now is just make sure you make tackles and just make clean tackles make sure you have the ball carry because don't this is not the time to think that your teammate can get to play or whatever because Ed Stinson coach Tobo has taught his players to play for 60 minutes no matter what the story Hoboken not a team that fumbles in a lot you know Wayne Hills is thinking of tackling the football right now and another flag will stop the clock with 4.18 to go I don't know if Ed Stinson is as upset with the penalty situation and the loss of yardage as much as he's upset with the stopping the clock. That delay of game backs him up five more and stops it with 4.18 left. You know, we, we talked to the coach a little bit before the game, and he was a little bit unwound. He was ready to play this game. He was really, you know, he knew that he was playing Wayne Hills, and they had played him last year, and Wayne, they had beaten Wayne Hills, but... It was a tough ball game, and it's a lot of pressure on them because he's playing in so many games every week. And they're trying to get knocked off. Going to the carry out, second down. Cut back, running, look out. Down the side, he goes. One day the beat for 70 yards, and a stiff arm on Monaghan is going to get him out of the one-yard line. It went 69 yards and stopped at the one. An unbelievable run to the outside for Tyrell Dorch. Tyrell Dorch, number 34, who looks like, he said, Walter Payton. And on this play, he did look like Walter Payton because he runs so tough inside. Inside and switching the ball, making sure he has the ball under the outside arm because he wants to do this down the sideline. And that is, boom. That stiff arm right in the face before he's knocked out of bounds. But I, I, it looked like he was really close. Astounding numbers on the night being compiled now by George, who's run for 283 yards. Oh, that is just outstanding. Looking for his fourth touchdown right here. Getting away from the defenders. Oh, get it in the end zone. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they marked it out to two. His foot went out at the two-yard line. That was one heroic individual effort. But he's going to end up losing a half yard on the play. He's saying, come on, that's twice. Uh, it is twice. And, uh, and this time he looks like Herschel Walker when Herschel was in Georgia, just making people miss, stepping over him, and then at the end, making people pay for it. I don't it looked think he like went to out. Me, it looked like it was a touchdown. But... Second down and goal to go. Under four minutes left. Dorch pulls straight ahead. Bounding number four. This time they give him the touchdown and why not? He's just carrying this team. All year he's carried this team. He's rushed for over 2,300 yards. And you caught him with the outstanding defensive play of Hoboken. And that's why you have a team. touchdowns on the night, 285 yards rushing in his final game at Hoboken. Just an outstanding effort, offensively and defensively, and his big runs and big plays come in the fourth quarter. He had a 52-yard touchdown run, a 42-yard touchdown run, a 69-yard run to the one-yard line. He's hit pay dirt four times tonight. Wayne Hills was thinking, you know, we're 14. We got a little time left. Over here. Well, 
that ended that right there on the shoulders of number 34. What a weapon. Wordplay drives 71 yards. There was a penalty on the extra point attempt, and now looks like there's another one. They're going to move their kicker back. It appears another five yards. An illegal procedure call on the lineup, and then another fallback as George celebrates. The sign of a great running back is he gets stronger as the game goes. They like to get the ball early just to get the feel of the game, and then as the game goes on in the third and fourth quarter, they want the ball even more because they can... The extra point attempt is blocked. It was basically the equivalent of a 30-yard field goal. 27 to 7 score with under four minutes left. How did they get down? In scoring range? One guy. <laughs> Just a play up the middle, and you said we talked about his vision and his presence and the way he stays on his feet and just has that little lean to run forward. And this again is in the fourth quarter, his 30th carry. And he's carrying it 69 yards in that strong forearm or stiff arm right before they say pull out at the first one yard line. And here's the touchdown, his 33rd carry where he just drives up the middle, pushing his way through, following those big linemen, going in for another touchdown. Besides his touchdown, and again, it came off of the draw, which 
they found a little bit too late will work and that's running that draw play that really opens up a little bit a little bit of a lane and that's what Spicer needs to get upfield. He needs a lane. As you said, they manufactured it for him using the draw here in the fourth quarter, but by that time the game is pretty much past Wayne Hill's by. Fourth down. They've got to get it to midfield to keep this drive going. Olsen throwing, got the man, complete for first down yardage is Mullen. Makes it down to the 47-yard line of Hoboken. Mullen, who's been very busy in this fourth quarter, running big streaks, long streaks, trying to get the ball down behind the defenders. This time he comes up with an outcut to pick up the first down and keep the chains moving because with a minute and 50 seconds left, they just want to get some more points on the board. Right now they're working for next year. They, they know that this game is pretty much out of hand and you can't win it, but they love to play the entire ball game. Motor is just a stop. More so is Olsen. He'll be looking up for another couple of years. Setting up what it looked like is supposed to be a screen, but Olsen looked the other way and tried to find his tight end, Shulieri. Shulieri is only the second time we call his name besides that opening drive where he caught the ball coming across the middle and when you are in Hoboken and when you play against Hoboken and they have eight and nine men up front, you really got to start trying to pop something really quick. Three-step drops or something. Get them out of that eight-man front. All day they've been in that eight-man front. Eight blitz coming. Olsen got away through the ball complete. Flag down on the play. So here he makes the catch down to the 31-yard line. And now we'll see whether or not there may have been an illegal man downfield. Just a minute, 22 seconds away from celebrating another state title. We keep going back to the numbers because they're so mind-boggling. With this one, it'll be 62-1 since 1994, 73-2 since 1993. That's going to be a defensive hold, and they're going to refuse the penalty, so... Wayne Valley will get it down to the 31-yard line with a minute, 22 left on the clock. Check that Wayne Hills. And it looks coming. Durant got another one. Durant coming again. This time it was against Rice. Playing that left tackle, the blind side of Olsen. Olsen didn't even get a chance to get his head around, didn't see anything. And you can see the coach, Olsen, is really upset with his offensive line. He said, listen, you got to give him some time. Well, also talking to his son and quarterback. And once again, like you said, this is instructive to move on beyond this year. And he called a timeout with a minute one left to think in terms of maybe trying to get one more score, maybe trying to run a couple more plays. Oh, wow. They are going to load this one up for Ed Stinson. That is, a, that is a bucket being prepared. That's a bucket being prepared. You see this pouring the Gatorade containers into the, <laughs> the big bucket. Now they're saying, look, we're on the big screen. He can see us. They're saying, watch that now, guys. He sees this. We're on the big screen. We're blowing their cover. Yes, we are. We are ratting them out. They can wait. They've got time. Well, it's not too cold tonight, so you won't freeze. It won't won't turn to ice before he walks off the field. You kind of got to think there's part of him that expects it coming. Play action on second down. There's Spicer. Oh, he lost his footing. He had some room to run. He had some room to run. Spicer catching the ball out of the backfield. Not getting out of bounds and not turning around. He really, you, you get lost in trying to make a big play. They're going to try to get the first down, but they're not going to get it there. They do get out of bounds with 36 seconds to go, and they'll have a fourth down opportunity to see what they can do. They're saying, now look, we're up there again. They got us up there again. So look, 
said, look, you got to move out of the way, you got to run, you got to run quick. We're saying, wait, wait till they take us off the big screen. <laughs> Should we give the guys in the truck the assist? Yeah, there you go. That is our little gift to the players in Hoboken. Great team they are, well coached, they play tough. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> John Anderson, our director, is playing with these guys. Olsen could be his last pass attempt of the year, or maybe not. Oh, it is a catch. Down to 17. It is a catch. For grabs, knocked down. 21 seconds left to go. See, with 21 seconds left, you see Coach Simpson still calling out defensive signals, making sure that they cover the slant. Doesn't want to give up anything. That's why he has the ball. Oh, they got the wrong man. Champions, but in Hoboken we believe it. 
You know, these same great players that you saw on offense are out there on defense. They're covering kicks, which is a defensive concept in itself. And I think, for the most part, we had control of the football game from the defensive point of view. Now, also control of the football game coming from some wonderful athletic talent for number 34. And he had a couple of runs, not necessarily just touchdown runs tonight, that were eye-opening. In fact, one seven-yard run for a first down early in the game that I thought was one of the best runs for seven yards you're going to see. Uh, well, he had lived this one. I, I, I thought you were talking about a cutback play. Uh, you don't need me to, to have him run like this. He's just a, a great, great player. A couple of peel-back blocks. But look at the contact there, and he stretches the ball forward. I wish, uh, I wish you were showing one of design like this one. You know, there is some design. He, he finds a hole, and he makes a great cutback. And I didn't think there was anybody that could catch this kid, but it's late in the fourth quarter, so that's where the possibility comes in. He ended up taking this one 69 yards down the sideline to the one-yard line. There was a question about whether or not he was in, but and just that one foot going out of the two-yard line right before he stretched over the pylon. Nonetheless, uh, when, you, when you coach a player of this kind of ability, kind of hard to see him go, isn't it? Well, without a doubt. I mean, we've had some great players, you know, in Rashad Casey, Rayvon Anderson, Keon Walker. He's certainly in that mold, and those are the guys that lead you to state championships. Well, Coach, once again, congratulations on a super effort from your squad. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. All right, I take you over now to Jared Black standing out alongside me, talking with the guy that we were just talking about. Terrell Dortch, rushing for almost 300 yards again, four touchdowns. First of all, tell us about your how it feels to play your last game for Hoboken and have a championship. It's kind of sad at the same time exciting, because you know I worked hard to get where I'm at now. And, and thanks to that coach Tenson's program and the rest of the coaching staff that we're successful at where we are now. So at the same time it's sad, at the same time it's exciting. So I'm happy to be where I'm at now. Well, we're going to take, take a couple look at a couple of your touchdowns. That first, here's the first touchdown that went just seemed like it was just a dive up the middle and you just tipped it up to the house. Yeah, well, we got the line got to make calls up front because they're in the A gap. We got to make a long call. They're in the B gap, make a short. And they're in the A gap, so we made a long call. And Coach always told me I got to break at least two tackles to get where I want to go. And that's what happened. That's what happened to do there and break two tackles. And I'm not making that one. Well, now here's your third touchdown. This this touchdown number three. Yeah. Um, but we went through the hole and I saw I saw two guys there. One was bigger than the other, so I went after the smaller guy. <laughs> yeah, so that's what smart running backs do. I went after the smaller guy and I happened to beat him, so I, I raced him to the end zone and I just got that point. You know, I was talking about what really is the accent of a, a good running back is later in the game, the more he gets the ball, the more carries he has, the stronger it seems that he gets. It seems like you are as strong in the fourth quarter as you were in the first quarter. Yeah, well, um, that's what conditioning drills in the summertime come in. Like, during the summertime, it's like 90, 90 degrees. We're in basketball gym running suicides up and down, dying. And that's when that kicks in that. You know, you can't get tired in the first quarter, even though you're tired. You just can't show. You got to dig down deep in your heart. And, and I dug down deep in my heart, and it just came out in the fourth quarter, in the third quarter. And I just happened to get where I wanted to go. Tell me a little bit about this Hoboken tradition. I mean, you guys, in, in your four years of, at Hoboken, how many games have you won and how many games have you, have you lost? And what is, it, does it seem to be that about Hoboken that just continues to push out championships? My sophomore year, I went, my sophomore year I went 10 and 1, junior year 12 and 0, this year 12 and 0. So I do the math, and it's just a program. It's just playing the system and the guys around me. It's not only me, I, my line got a block in order for me to get, do what I got to do. And, the defense stepped up big every game. We only gave up about four touchdowns this whole year. So it's not only me. I got to give credit to my teammates. Well, congratulations to you and the rest of your team on another championship. Another great game, the championship that they win, come back again, win a game again that they played against the same team last year. Same result, but this time, you know, Dortch is the difference, scoring four touchdowns, going for almost 300 yards rushing. Now, a super special player, and you got to see him on display here tonight at his final game as a high school player. This is a very special back.